Welcome to another episode of SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric users. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about assembly modeling, particularly top-down design. Top-down design in SOLIDWORKS is vastly different compared to top-down design in Creo Parametric. It's better to think of it as in-context design and also creating what are called virtual components. In other words, the parts and subassemblies are stored within the assembly file. Okay, let's take a look at a few different things. I'm starting off in an assembly that I created using top-down design techniques. First off, I'm going to go to my options. I'll click on the options, and then let's click on assembly in the left-hand side. And one thing that you want to be aware of is an option in here for saving new components to external files. By default, this is turned off. So if I create any parts or subassemblies in this assembly, they'll be part of this assembly file, and that's called a virtual component. You have the same thing in Creo Parametric. It was added around Creo 5, it was hidden in the software. Then in Creo 7, you had embedded components, but this is just the default for top-down design in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to cancel out of here. And the next thing that I'm going to do is to show you how to start off an assembly using top-down design techniques. I'm gonna to go to a, another window that I have open with just the engine block part. From here to start off the assembly, I can go to the file drop-down menu, and here's the command, make assembly from part. When I click on that, well, it's gonna start off my assembly. One big difference compared to Creo Parametric is that you don't give the name of the assembly up front; you give it when you are saving it. And here we have the Begin Assembly Property Manager. Here we have the different documents that are currently open. Right now, the engine block is selected because I was just working on that. And if I left click, it's going to drop it into the assembly as the first component. You'll see that there is an F in parentheses. That means that it is fixed. So in SOLIDWORKS, you don't have this default constraint like you have in Creo Parametric. Here I have the save warning. Let me click on save to the computer. Let me just hit the save button. Okay, now that I have started my assembly, I'm just gonna rotate around because I'm gonna create my first component and I need to select the sketch plane for the first feature. So if you go to the insert components dropdown, here we have the ability to create a new part or a new subassembly within this assembly. And that's really what top-down design is about in SOLIDWORKS. I will click on new part and in the message area down at the bottom of the screen, I'm being prompted to select the face or plane on which I want to position the new part. So I will click this surface in the model that immediately puts me into sketch mode so I can start sketching the first feature. Let me just change. So I'm looking straight on at the plane at which I'll be sketching. And I'm just going to create a circle. Let me let it snap in here, and I'm just going to drag it out, yay big. And for the radius, I'm just going to start off with a value of 27.5. See how that looks. Yep, that is good. I'll hit the check mark out of here, and the sketch is in blue because it is under constraint. I need to throw in a dimension. You'll notice that here we don't get our... Uh, weak dimensions like you do in Creo Parametric. Let me just locate it over there and I'll just hit the check mark. Now it turns to black. Oh, let me hit the check mark there to get out of the dimension dialog box. So there's my first sketch. Let me hit this check mark in order to get out of the sketch. And I'm going to grab the side of this and drag it to make it a little bit wider. For some reason I keep on getting these warning messages. Okay, let me expand this part in the tree to show you a few different things. So if you take a look at the name of the part, it's got the name part one, that's the default name that it gives it. And then it's got the caret sign, sort of like the up arrow, and then the name of the assembly. And so that's the indication that this is a virtual component. It's a component that's going to reside within this assembly. If I right click on the component, well, there are a few different commands in here, like I can choose to rename the part and I'm going to call this, I don't know, crank shaft. I'm going to put a space in there just so that 
it looks different than another part that I have called crankshaft. But let me right click on it again to show you that within here, we have other different options, like we can save part in external file. And that's if you don't want it to be one of these virtual components. Also, let me show you that when I created this brand new part, you can see that it's highlighted in blue because that is the active component that I am editing or creating new features in. It's sort of like showing up in blue like you would have the little green diamond in Creo Parametric. Also, if you take a look at the ribbon, there is an edit component button that is currently selected. So that means that I am working on a component, a part or subassembly within this assembly. And right next to edit component, there is another button for no external references. So this button will allow you to prevent the creation of external references. Let's say I'm done creating geometry in this part for now. I'm just gonna deselect edit component. Notice that this part then changes to appearing in black in the tree. Let's take a look at some of the other different options for external references. Once again, I will go to the little gear icon for my options. Then we have external references over here. And you'll notice that there are a lot fewer options than you have in Creo Parametric. Creo Parametric has a ton of options for controlling the creation of external references. But you see that we have a few different options in here, like we have allow creation of references external to the model. You have reference component type, any component or only envelope components. And in the context of the top level assembly or within the same sub assembly. And that second option over here, there's something very similar that you have for reference creation control in Creo Parametric. Also show an X feature in the tree for broken external references and force reference document to save to current major version. SOLIDWORKS is very particular. It wants all the different components in an assembly to be the same version or saved in the same version of SOLIDWORKS that you are working in. So anyhow, those are some of the different options. Let me cancel out of here and show you some other different things. If you take a look at this feature in the tree, it's got a little dash with a right arrow, and that is a symbol for having an external reference. Also, when I hover over that sketch, you can see that it is pointing to the parents of this feature. So for example, one of the parents is the plane called front, and another one is the origin, sort of like the default coordinate system from the engine block part, because that's what I use to locate it in the model. Now that's all the modeling I'm going to do in this assembly. Let me jump over to the other assembly that I worked on just so I can show you a few more different things. So for example, here is the crankshaft. You can see that I have a bunch of different components or excuse me, features in this part model that have the little symbol for external references. So we can see that it's pointing to this feature and boss extrude is pointing to some other different ones. I'm just gonna move my mouse over to show you how it's showing the different parents and sometimes the ones that have children, uh, the children of those different features. If I go into the engine head part, similarly, we have a bunch of external references, uh, parents in other different parts, and you can see the children as well as I hover over them. By the way, these different arrows that show the parents and the children, that's called dynamic reference visualization. And I recommend that you turn it on. I don't believe it is on by default when you first fire up SOLIDWORKS. If you right click on the top node in the model tree, you have this icon for dynamic reference visualization to point to the parents. And then one next to it is for that dynamic reference visualization for pointing to the children. Similarly, if you select the top node in the tree, you can also go to the view drop down menu. And here we have user interface. And this is where you can turn on the two different buttons for that dynamic reference visualization as well. Okay, next thing to take a look at, I'm going to right click on the top node of the tree and we get our pop-up menu. And then within here, down near the bottom, we have external references. 
and this will open up a dialog box that will show a list of all the different external references for all the different features in the model. So we can see here's the crankshaft part, here are a bunch of sketches, the status in context, here we have the reference entity. And by the way, for the different status options that you have, you have in context, and then we have options like dangling, which means that it's like missing the reference. We also have broken uh, in context. I've mentioned that already. Locked and out of context. In other words, something is not currently uh, in the session. But anyhow, you can see all the different references from in here. And so, for example, if you select one of these, then you have the ability to lock the selected reference or break the selected reference. And lock and break one is temporary and one is permanent. If you choose to lock the reference, that means that it's not going to update with any changes to the parent, uh, but you can unlock it later on. You can reestablish that relationship so that it updates, but then you have the break option and the break is permanent. In other words, you're breaking the reference and you no longer are going to be able to reestablish or update with any changes to the parent. This external references dialog box, you can also get it for an individual feature as opposed to the entire assembly. So for example, I've got this cut over here, I can select it and right click on it. And then we have the external references command, and I can see just the external references for that one particular feature. Another option that you have in here, let me go to a, another feature and I'm going to right click on it. Here we have the parent child command and that'll open up a dialog box, which is sort of like how the reference viewer in Creole Parametric used to look years and years and years ago. Uh, much less information than you, currently, than you currently see in the reference viewer today. All right, let me close out of there. Now, another thing, I'm gonna hop back over to that assembly that I started for a moment and then come back over to this one. Here we take a look at the different mates in the model. You'll see that the component that I created in the context of the assembly and the first component have what's called an in-place mate. A mate is similar to a constraint in Creo Parametric, like if you have coincident or normal or parallel for locating a component. Well, they're called mates in SOLIDWORKS. And this one has the in-place mates for the first components that were located inside of here. Let me go back to the assembly that I already have a few components in and I'm gonna collapse the ones that I expanded. If I expand this one, we can see that we have the in-place mates between the engine block and the other three components that were created in the context of the assembly. Another thing that you can display in your Feature Manager Design Tree, which is what SOLIDWORKS calls the model tree, is something called your update holders. So we have all these different external references. If I right click on the top node in the model tree, there is an option in here called Show Update Holders. And so when I click on that, here we have all the different holders for the different external references in the model. So this is another way that you can access, say, external references or the parent-child dialog box. And if you show the update holders and you don't want them taking up space in the tree, you can right-click and then go to hide those update holders. One other thing to show about dynamic reference visualization, let me expand one of my parts in here. And so, for example, I've got the sketch. If I hover my mouse over it, I can see the parents of the feature. If I left click, then it's going to remain visible on the screen. And then I can left click on the little circle. And from here, I can choose to break the reference or lock the reference. I can do that for an entire part as well. So for example, if I select this part and it's highlighting the parents, I can then click on the little circle. And from here, I can break the references or lock the references for that part. Okay, next concept, in Creole Parametric, you have data sharing features like copy geometry, publish geometry, merge, inheritance, shrink wrap, and so on. You don't really have those in SOLIDWORKS. You do have commands where you can insert a part into another part 
or also you can go in the assembly and if you select a component you can choose file and then there is derive component part i'm going to go and create a brand new part let me hit the new button and then part is selected and i'll click the ok button okay so when i'm in this part i'm going to go to the insert drop down menu and then we have this command here for part and it's automatically going to select the other part that I had open in another window. And so this is sort of like merge or merge inheritance. And if you take a look in the property manager for the insert part command, you can choose what's going to be transferred from the source part to the target part. So you could choose solid bodies, surface bodies, axes, planes, a bunch of different options for sketches and coordinate systems, materials, so forth and so on. Uh, also, you have an option in here if you want to locate the part using a move or copy feature after this. I'm not going to do that. And then there's the option for dependency. Do you want to break the link to the original part? I'm not going to check that. And then we have the ability to propagate any visual properties from the original part. So I'm just going to left click in order to drop this in here. And so that way we have a copy of a part within this part. So that's sort of kind of the closest you have to data sharing features in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, let me hop back over to that assembly. And in here, similarly, if I select a part like the engine block here, and then I go to file and then derive component part, here it starts off a brand new part and starts with the insert part dialog box. And it says click in the graphics area in order to load, place the part or hit the OK button to insert the part at the origin. I'm just going to hit the check mark over there. Yes, I'll say do whatever with the units in order to change them. So that is the insert part and the derived component part. And let me hop back over to my assembly. Basically, if you come from Creo Parametric, you're going to hate how SOLIDWORKS does top-down design. And if you come from SOLIDWORKS, you're going to hate how Creo Parametric does top-down design. If you come from Creo, you're going to think that SOLIDWORKS is too unstructured. And if you come from SOLIDWORKS, you're going to think that Creo is just too complicated. The best advice that I can give you when it comes to top-down design in Creo Parametric or SOLIDWORKS is to kind of forget everything that you know about top-down design from the other CAD software. So anyhow, I hope this helps get you started in top-down design in SOLIDWORKS.